Internal or external antenna tuner? Which one should you use? Should technicians stay away from certain portions of their allocated 10 meter sideband frequencies? And what's the best antenna to use if you want to get a hold of Santa? This time on Mailbag Monday. What is happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have your question featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, let's dive right in. We got three great questions for you. This first one asking The other night, I was using FT8 on a multi band and fed half wave antenna with my 7300. The SWR was almost three to one on my MFJ Versa tuner that's in line. That is almost where the 7300 says it can't tune. So I hooked up a rig expert to the tuner output and turned it off direct. I, I'm not sure what you mean by that. That doesn't make sense, but okay. Uh, with the tuner, I could adjust the SWR down to well below 2.1 to one across the 30 meter band. Does this make sense to you? Yes, it does. Should I abandon the 7300 tuner on all bands where the SWR is high in favor of the Versa tuner? So thanks for writing in, Rick. Uh, it makes perfect sense. So I'm assuming you have an 80 meter end fed or perhaps a 40. Either way, the 30 meter band is not a harmonic of any of the other frequencies that you typically are gonna get with an end fed half wave. So it makes sense that on 30 meters, you're gonna have a higher SWR. Now, if your radio is capable of tuning that, I don't see any reason uh, to have the external tuner in line, but it's certainly not going to hurt anything. Either way, your tuner is designed to match that impedance and bring it down to something uh, around 50 ohms that your radio is going to want to see. It's not going to make your antenna any better. It's just going to make your radio happy. So if you're getting a better match with your MFJ Versa tuner, then by all means, use that. If you're getting a better match with your 7300s tuner, use that. Either way, you're transforming impedance from one number to approximately 50 ohms, and that's all that really matters. We want to see our radios happy, and really you're going to have the same performance, uh, assuming you get the same SWR with either tuner. So I wouldn't fret it too much either way, so long as you're getting on the air and you're making the contacts, that's kind of all that matters. Uh, if, if you're really into 30 meters, maybe look into getting an antenna switch, and if, if you can put up another antenna that's just dedicated to 30 meters, uh, that might be an option. I'm not sure uh, what your situation is at home, but that would be one way to do it. But yeah, it, you know, I have an NFED half wave here for 80 meters. I have to use a tuner on 30 because it's just not resonant. So, but my 7610 is, is capable of tuning uh, just about anything I throw at it uh, because it's not really that far out of whack. So don't fret it too much. If it's working for you, keep on keeping on. Thanks for writing in. This next question comes from a technician who had an experience while he was operating in his single sideband privileges. This viewer writes, I was wondering if you could define the section of 10 meters I should avoid while calling CQ with 100 watts. I answered a CQ and the operator explained on that part of 10 meters is QRP. Hmm. <laughs> Can you define the section of 10 meters a technician would call CQ at 100 watts SSB? So far, I think it's 28450 to 28499. Thanks for your helpful videos. So Ryan, it looks to me like you have had your first encounter with what we like to call the band police. Now the band police have no authority, but they give themselves authority and they make it their point, they make it their mission to get on the air and tell you what you should or should not do. The first thing I'm gonna say is completely disregard anything any of these people say. Now, it is your responsibility to know your privileges and understand where you can and cannot operate, but you didn't do anything wrong. And let's take a look at why. This is the U.S. Amateur Radio Band Plan, and if we look right here at the top right, this is our 10-meter portion. Now, you as a technician, you have privileges from 28 to 28.5 megahertz. In the red here, this is where you have RIDI and data privileges. So if you wanted to do FT8, that's where you would do it. If you want to get on RIDI or any of the digital modes, you do it in that uh, bit of spectrum. Now here in the yellow, between 28.3 and 28.5 megahertz, that's where you have your single sideband privileges. Now, mind you, you are on upper sideband, so you really don't want to transmit any higher than 28.497. Otherwise, you'd be transmitting above that 28.5 megahertz. So really keep three kilohertz below 28.5 and you'll be just fine. 
Now, if you notice over here, uh, it's, it, it says some things about what uh, you have authorization for and stuff, but it never says anything about specifically uh, power or QRP or 100 watts or calling frequencies or any of that garbage. You have this spectrum allocated to you, and that's where you get to play. This is from the ARL, and this is called the Considerate Operator's Frequency Guide. So while there's not specific frequencies that are rules, there are what we sometimes refer to as like a gentleman's agreement. But I want to read this so we're all very clear. The following frequencies are generally recognized for certain modes or activities during normal conditions. These are not regulations and occasionally a high level of activity, such as during a period of emergency response, de-expedition or contest may result in stations operating outside these frequency ranges. Nothing in the rules recognizes a nets, groups, or any individual's special privilege to any specific frequency. So what they just said there completely negates everything that that guy says. Nothing in the rules recognizes any specific frequency being privileged, okay? Now, in good practice and plain old common sense for any operator, regardless of mode, to check to see if the frequency is in use prior to engaging operation. If you were there first, other operators should make an effort to protect you from interference to the extent possible, given that 100% interference-free operation is an unrealistic expectation in today's congested bands. So what that means is, so first off, this guy was calling CQ. Now, I don't know what station, what frequency he was on, but he's calling CQ, and you answered. Tell me how that's wrong. So now let's take a look here, 28.385, which is kind of right in the middle of your, your single sideband privileges, is recognized under that kind of gentleman's agreement that this is the QRP SSB calling frequency. So if you were on 28.385 and that guy was using QRP and he was calling CQ, he was doing what this says, okay? But again, Nothing recognizes this. These aren't rules. These are just, well, let's let's maybe say that 28.385 is the QRP calling frequency. And then the same thing for CW at 28060, okay? But you came back to him. It was was he calling, I'm only looking for QRP operators? So basically this guy's an old curmudgeon and just wants to uh, tell you what he thinks. And it's all garbage. If you want to take 1500 watts and call CQ on 28.385, guess what? You're allowed. If you were there first, if you listened, listened, and then listened again to make sure the frequency was not in use, you ask is the frequency in use, you don't hear anything, you do everything in your power to make sure that you're not stepping on anybody or causing any kind of interference, you call CQ on whatever frequency you want between 28.3 and 28.5. Again, keep it three kilohertz down from 28.5. You do whatever the heck you want, and you are well within your technician band plans. So I hope that helps. Uh, thanks so much for writing in. I do appreciate it. I'm always happy to help out technicians. I do a live stream every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Central where we get on 10 meters and, and try and make contacts specifically to help encourage technicians to get on the air and use your privileges. So maybe we can catch you out there one time. I hope to get you in the log. Our last question is very fitting for December. This viewer is asking, Hi, Mike. I hope this email finds you well. I am well, thank you. I have a question about 80 meter antennas. I'm looking into checking into the CQ Santa net. I need a good semi-portable antenna. Would you use a really long NFED half wave or a dipole? So that's a great question. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of uh, responses in the comments to this one. The bottom line is the length of your 80 meter antenna, whether it's an NFED half wave or a dipole, is gonna be pretty much the same darn thing. Maybe a couple feet difference. It's really gonna depend on where you're going and how you're planning on putting that antenna up. The easier antenna to put up, in my opinion, is the NFED half wave because you only have two points of support. You have the feed point 
and you have the other end of the wire. You can run it as a sloper, you can throw two ropes over a tree, run it horizontal, you can run it as an inverted V if you want, maybe, maybe just throw a rope over the tree and have the feed point and the other end of the antenna closer towards the ground so you only need basically really one support up high. Uh, very, very easy to put up. The dipole is gonna need three supports. It's not gonna need, but it's gonna make your life easier. You're gonna have one support to support the center and two supports, one on either end, to support both ends of the legs of the dipole. So a little bit more work putting up. Not a lot, but some more work. Now, the benefit of an 80 meter dipole, typically dipoles are a bit less noisy. They're a single band antenna, so you can tune it for exactly whatever frequency you want to uh, work Santa on. So it's gonna be arguably a little better uh, at that. There's also no transformer, so there's a little bit less uh, loss going to the dipole because you don't have to change one impedance to another. It's just gonna kind of be 50 ohms where you want it. The NFET half wave does have a transformer, so you're gonna be transforming a really high impedance, typically between two and 3,000 ohms down to 50 ohms. That's what that transformer does. So there are some losses incurred uh, by doing that in the form of heat. The benefit is you now have a multi-band antenna, but NFEDs do tend to be a little bit noisier. So there's that compromise. Or, you know, or if you're going to be in the middle of a park where there's no power lines and things and the noise level is really low, it's not going to make a lick of difference. If you're in uh, more of an urban environment in a, in a neighborhood or something, the dipole would probably do you a little better just because they are uh, quite a bit less noisy. But either way, same length, same footprint you're gonna be taking up. Uh, you might spend another five minutes putting up the dipole versus the NFED half wave. Uh, you know, you might also look into uh, some kind of vertical, like a Wolf River Coils, if you don't have a lot of room. A Wolf River Coils Silver Bullet 1000 uh, just as it comes stock would be able to get you on 80 meters with a very small footprint uh, You would probably need to add a few more counterpoise wires than what comes with it to really get a, a good uh, signal out there But that would be a great uh, antenna to use as well. So Lots of different ways you can do it uh, But either of the NFED half wave or the dipole you're looking 130 some odd feet of wire Regardless, so it's just a matter of what you have at your disposal to put it up what you're willing to go through, how much time you have, all that kind of stuff, and hopefully maybe keep the, the kids entertained uh, while you're doing all this uh, before they get to work, Santa. So either way, I hope you get, to, you get to get on the air and you get to work, Santa. I know Santa comes in for me uh, about 20 over here. There's a, there's a relay station in Dallas a couple uh, hundred miles north of me, and he's always 20 over. So I get to work Santa all the time if I want, but uh, I do have an NFED halfway for 80 meters above my house. So, uh, hey, I hope you get to work Santa. I hope the kids get to work them. And more importantly, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. And that's going to do it for this episode of Mailbag Monday, guys. Again, if you have a question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Just put Mailbag Monday in the subject so I know it's a uh, question for me. And uh, other than that, like I said, have a very Merry Christmas. And uh, we'll see you again before Christmas, but whatever. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll catch you again on another episode of k Radio Stuff. 73, guys.